spine concepts cervical rheumatoid arthritis. Cervical spine involvement occurs in about 90% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis. All rheumatoid arthritis patients should have C-spine examination. Start with the C-spine x-rays. It helps to diagnose the atlantoaxial instability. Early aggressive medical treatment can decrease this risk. C1, C2 instability is common. It can be up till 80%. It occurs due to transverse ligament pathology. So you will need to get flexion extension views in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, especially preoperative x-rays. And if it looks bad, you got to stabilize the spine before you do elective total hip or a total knee. Discover the C1, C2 instability and fix it first before elective operation of total hip. And you see in the x-ray, lateral x-ray, the atlanto dense interval, the ADI, and if it is more than 3.5 millimeter, that means instability may be present. If it is more than 7 mm, it means disruption of the alar ligament, more damage. These patients can get myelopathy. The ADI is unreliable predictor of paralysis. The posterior atlanto dense interval is a better screening test. It can predict a spinal cord injury. If the posterior atlanto dense interval is less than 14 mm, it can predict a spinal cord injury. Get an MRI. The surgery is done if the ADI is more than 10 mm or you have less than 14 mm of the posterior ADI interval and the operation is C1, C2 fusion. Clinically, the C1, C2 instability could give neck pain, headache, myelopathy with abnormal gait, with parathesia, with difficulty in fine motor control. The second condition is called the basilar invagination, which occurs in about 40% of the patient with rheumatoid arthritis. Basilar invagination is superior migration of the odontoid. So the tip of the odontoid is above the foramen magnum. In this case, you do occiput to C2 fusion, plus or minus odontoid resection. The third condition is the subaxial subluxation occurs in about 20% of the patients and the indication for surgery is neurological compromise. The space available for the cord is less than 14 mm, then do surgery, do posterior fusion. Surgery is usually not successful with severe types of neurologic impairment. When do you do surgery in rheumatoid arthritis? You do surgery if there is severe pain or if there is neurological deficit. And if the x-ray shows that the posterior atlanto dense interval is less than 14 mm or superior odontoid migration or if there is subaxial subluxation with sagittal canal diameter less than 14 mm. If the posterior atlanto dense interval more than 14 mm, the patient will demonstrate significant motor recovery after surgery. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.